But the most asked question with people uh, knew that you guys were coming was, how does the household work with a vegan and you're not vegan right no nah, not vegan. a vegan and someone who's not vegan and you you pushing vegan and you pushing chicken and beef like how he does that work he, he really don't eat beef <laughs> you don't eat beef. no but listen it's funny because a lot of people do ask us that question um i do a lot of grill stripping at the house you know mm. what i'm saying we got mm. we got a commercial grill so i strip it down the griddle so whatever i make i make sure i clean it real good you know what i'm saying so she get what she want her vegetables and all that but since also, we've been like together ve- so like vegans are like on some shit like where it's almost like an allergy type shit. Yeah, oh no, she don't play. She don't play. I never her knew that. So listen, nah, so funny story, that. y'all. So when we first met, our first little encounter was at a vegan restaurant. So like, I was very clear about my lifestyle. And before I started dating him, I was like, I'm never dating no guy that ain't vegan. Like that's out the window. Fuck that. Oh wow. And then I met him, and then all of that went yeah, out. Yeah, you know that, <laughs> um, that that Philly swag came but, out. Um, that shit yeah. was <laughs> but in the household, it's really cool because. I know how to cook for a vegan and a non-vegan. Mm. And, like, he don't impede on my lifestyle, and he don't be like, why you eating that? Like, I eat what I eat, he eat what he eat, and we respect each other. And that's how yeah, and she could cook. You'd be thinking, like, damn, like, how you make this taste like this and not tasting it? She yeah. can cook, so yeah. it works out for us. Okay. <laughs> so you tried them, um... What them is, them vegan hot wings and shit, what it is? <laughs> <laughs> cauliflower. Yeah, he yeah. tried everything. Nah, I tried all of it. Honestly, since since we've been together, I've been eating a little, you know, a, a lot different. But I'm putting my, my swag and my seasoning on and all that to give it that taste so it ain't, you know, just like, you know, vegetables. And we able to help each other out. Like, I don't eat beef as much as I used to. Mm. Um, I'm more seafood. I love seafood. Anybody know me, I eat seafood my whole life. Yeah. So, mm. And that's why, for real, for real, the salmon egg roll is working big days because... I was able to create the seasoning, you know what I'm saying, that people love to, you know, get that seafood taste. Yeah, so Very. appreciate that. So I'm able to give everybody everything they want, you know what I'm saying, whether it's beef, chicken, or salmon. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, catering I everything. Got, I, got, um, I got turned on, like, to the whole restaurant. Shout out to my nigga, Tak. Oh, he, Tak, my um, dog, man. Yeah, Shout yeah, out that's to my brother. Too. Like, he turned me on, and he was like, yo, he was like, my man's got a new spot down there when you were um at the gas station. Yeah. And done with it, yeah. Like, and it was like, I went there for the first time, and I couldn't even get in or, like, eat or order or nothing because it was, like, so crazy. Yeah, that gas station so crazy. used to be humping. Like, so, like, when did you understand, like, okay, this shit is bigger than snowballs and cheesesteaks, and I got to get to a bigger space because it's too packed in here and it's not going to work? Honestly, it's, it's when we can no longer control the traffic, and I was getting into yeah, it with the yeah. Indian guy every other day, and I'm like, you know what? I got to get my shit together, you know, yeah. get these funds together to build this location and, and get up and running because I knew that when Eve had posted it and it yeah, went yeah. viral, yeah. it was starting to get national attention. And I'm like, this shit bigger than food. And yeah. and I and why I had the culture and I can make people understand, like, you don't got to be a basketball player or a rapper to make it. You could be an entrepreneur. So I'm like, I got the, put in some hard yeah, work I got the chance to really show people an right. opportunity to do that. And I felt like while I had it, I wasn't going, you know, miss up on yeah, the yeah, opportunity. Yeah. So I took it. <laughs> so I knew the whole time I was selling more than food. Yeah, that's all right. That's dope. So y'all been on a massive winning streak, uh, featured in Essence, People Magazine, all the publications, right? And of course, when people look at social media, they see the wins. But let's talk a little bit about before y'all was having the big wins, like a little bit of the struggle. I know your first business actually burned down. Yeah. And you know what's funny? This is a full circle moment because my first radio interview was with you. Yes. Give it up for DJ. <laughs> my first radio interview. First radio interview. Looking crazy oh, coming off. She, she, brought me, she, brought me that, she brought me that burger. I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> Looking crazy, tired. Yeah. But, and then um, look at us now. Right. Yeah. We, we waiting on it. We stay <laughs> right. in the It's moment. like crack now. Yeah, got to uh, have it. It wasn't easy for me. Um, i always been an entrepreneur and a hustler. Um, mm-hmm. For the people who don't know my story, my father did 22 years in prison. Mm. So I grew up in the prison system. Obviously, I wasn't behind bars, but... I had to go to prison and get swaddled down every single time we went to see my dad. You only got two hours. So, like, my mindset was like, this ain't my life. I ain't going to do this. Mm. So I became an entrepreneur. And as young as 14, I'm throwing parties. I'm selling food. I'm selling candy. And then I got older and had my own restaurant called Pinky's Jamaican and American Restaurant. And that restaurant was seemingly successful, but I was hustling back. That was in right? New York, right? That was in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was vegan and vegetarian at the time, but I was selling jerk chicken. So I wasn't being authentic <laughs> yeah. with who I was. Right. So yeah. you weren't you, living in your truth. I was not yeah. living in my truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 
this is such a, a serious conversation for people to understand, especially entrepreneurs that are listening to this. You have literally got to walk in your truth because if you don't, shit will literally fall apart. And that's what happened to me. Right. But I'm so glad it happened that I lost my car, got repoed, I got kicked out of my apartment, I went flat broke, and I literally, everything that I ever touched that used to turn to gold literally was nothing now. Mm. But I needed all of those things to happen because all it was was very expensive-ass school. You know what I'm saying? So that expensive school taught me how to be a better entrepreneur, how to be a better leader, so that when I create a slutty vegan, I'm like, all right, I've been here before. I know what this feels like. I know what to do different. So the journey has not always been easy. Most times people be like, oh, y'all overnight success. Overnight where? Right. Right. Overnight where? The finished product. I had moments where my wages got garnished, Mm. where I had tax issues, right, where I was on the verge of being about to close. Like, this shit this shit ain't for the week. Mm. And being a restaurateur is probably one of the hardest professions in the world. One, because restaurants don't last, Mm. right? Two, because you got to be a babysitter. You got to be a therapist, right? You got to take care of people, make sure everybody is good, and still maintain your sanity all while paying bills. Like, Mm. that shit ain't no joke. So to have to go through all of that is very difficult, but the reward is so much greater on the other side because I would not have it any other way. Mm. Yeah. How do y'all deal with? How do, okay. Go ahead, Trent. Now, so how y'all deal with like keeping the recipe right? Because a big thing, in some of my chef partners is like, I have to run this restaurant. I can't nobody else cook this yeah, shit. How I yeah, cook it. So yeah. how do y'all keep it? Yeah. So so honestly, that was a big test for the both of us because of course people love us, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. coming to the restaurant, if you don't see me on the grill, you know. I, I don't know like if I went the sandwich, like, so I know I had yeah. to I had to you know get the recipes all the way down so that no matter who making it, you know you feel confident mm-hmm. in the meal and you're getting the same thing over and over, mm-hmm. and you can't scale unless you can get the recipes and, and the procedures right. down. Right. Like I don't care how good your product is or what you put together, mm-hmm. you'll just have one location that's popping because the other one won't do the same thing the other one do because it don't taste the same. The people, mm-hmm. the let me tell you, the culture when you walk into a place is everything. Mm-hmm. Like. We yeah. go off of what we see. Like, I was telling a guy the other day, he was like, you know, I feel like you need to, you know, work on your ticket times and get your lines down. I'm like, you don't understand the culture. People eat off what they see. Right. When you ride past big days and you see the line down the block, you it like, this you shit popping. Yeah. I want to yeah. get yeah. line. I want to yeah. see what the, what, you know, what, what's shit going on. shit gotta be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't see nobody in well, line and nobody yeah. eating this shit. shit so, like, that's a fact. What we do good as, you know we what I'm saying? What we do good at, we, I think we understand the culture. Like, I think that Pink and I both, like, we, we really understand what people want. So, you know, growing forward and growing your brain is easier. It's not as hard than another person, you know, that's growing a restaurant and got to really physically sit there and work every day because they're scared to let the next person do the job. Mm-hmm. Right. We we let people do the job. We let people grow. We let people get careers, you know, mastering their own, you know, households and being able to take their own lives and their own journeys. And the only way you could do that is if you master the recipes and have faith Facts. in other people. Yeah. So I think that's what we both do well. And you can't grow inside of the store. Like, nah. Slutty Vegan wasn't able to grow until I stepped outside of the restaurant, mm. right? And that means processes and procedures and getting a co-packer to put your seasoning in together so you ain't got to make it every single day. The minute that I stepped outside of my restaurant, mm-hmm. I saw growth. Mm-hmm. When I was in there every day, all day, trying to be the line cook, trying to shake fries, trying to do schedules and do all of that, I couldn't get nothing done. And then come and do interviews. Like, I'm, I'm pouring out of my cup and I'm not able to feel from anybody else this cup because yeah. I'm so depleted and I'm yeah. so drained because my stuff ain't together but as soon as I stepped outside that restaurant then I started to see evolution in my business and it started to grow mm. but you gotta have your shit together though mm. you can't step out of the restaurant if your shit ain't together because it's gonna fall apart so you yeah. gotta have it together so <laughs> anybody so listening have your shit together <laughs> if you're planning on stepping out but mm. it works when you step out because you get to see what's really going on yeah. you know what you're really working with with your team mm. All right so I know another big thing with you is that you make like a concerted effort to consciously place your restaurants in areas that are typically known as food deserts. Mm -hmm. So what kind of made you aware of like the whole food desert concept and what made you feel like you were the person that was going to change that for our community? So funny story. I didn't know that I was going to be that person. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't wake up like, I'm going to be the one that's going to be this person. Like, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, right? like. <laughs> when I started Slutty Vegan, it was really just solving a personal problem. Right. And that's where the greatest passions and purposes come out of when you just solving a problem for yourself. Right, right. But then you realize that you really saving the world and helping yes, big picture. Yes. And I'm like me, I'm from East Baltimore from around the way. I'm saving the world. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So when when I saw 